Hallelujah. Can we rise up on our feet? You know, we are gathered here because of Jesus. We are here because of Him. He's our all sufficient panoplia. Scripture says that God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, speak unto our fathers by the prophets, hath in this last day spoken to us by His Son, whom He hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the worlds, who being the brightness of His glory, the express image of His person, upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself paid our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. But when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, he saith, Let all the angels worship him. John 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Same was with him in the beginning. By him were all things made. He is Jesus. He is God's perfect man and man's perfect God. He is Jesus. He is Jesus. He stands in the midst of the candlesticks. He is Jesus. He goes beyond the universe. He is Jesus. He is older than time. He existed before. Yeshua Hamashiach. He's called the Eye Asha Eye. The I am that I am. The Alpha, the Omega. He's the Protos, the Eschatos. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the Lamb of God. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus. We are not gathered here in Cincinnati, but we have come before the throne of God. We have come to Mount Zion. The city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. We have come to the church of the firstborn. We have come to the general assembly of the saints, all written in heaven. We have come to the blood of sprinkling, the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. You know, God has given us one message. He has given us one message. And the message is Jesus. Many people are seeing many things in the Bible. But God wants us to see one person. And his name is Jesus. The word of God is a man. His name is Jesus. When you read Genesis and you don't see Jesus, you haven't studied the scriptures. Jesus is the language of God. Jesus is the voice of the Father. Adam saw him. He saw the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Moses saw him. So Moses, an 80-year-old man, he climbs Mount Sinai. He gets to the top of the mountain. Mount Sinai is estimated to be 4,790 feet. Moses climbs every day. He goes there for six days. God has not shown up and yet so he's still there. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 We all with an unveiled face beholding us in a mirror the glory of God we are being changed into that same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord God is that spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty we are here because of him you may be here he would be here, but you'll miss him. One theologian said, A time will come, the Holy Spirit will enter into the church bodily and will not recognize him because we never knew him. But today, he's bringing us to the consciousness of himself. He's bringing us to the consciousness of himself. That is the reason why he has established kingdom. We are here because of kingdom. We are here because of purpose, because of passion. It is an agenda of kingdom. Many of us think the goal of God is church. No, the goal of God is kingdom. So he said to Peter, 
I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But when he was giving him the keys, he said, I give you the keys, not to the church, but to the kingdom. So many people are in church, but God wants us to come to kingdom. He says, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the ends of the earth. The reason why he says we are a royal priesthood is because we are called unto kingdom. So today he's given us the message unto the compromised church. He's given the message unto Pergamos. Pergamos comes from the coinage of the West, Pergos Camos, and marriage unto the world. But he's saying today, come out from amongst them and be separate unto me. It is a call unto purpose. Purpose is older than time. So he said he fashioned us according to eternal purpose. Purpose is older than time. So our gathering here, even though we are in time, we are called into the realm of spirits. We have come to engage with the unchanging changer. We have come to engage the limitless one. We have come to engage the one who stands in the midst of the candlesticks. We are going beyond the holy of holies. We are coming before the throne. We have come to the Ark of Testament. We have come to engage deity. We have come to romance the divine. We have come to meet God. It is not just about songs. It is about Him. It is about life. When you come into this realm, you would understand that a man can live for 33 years and it is enough because he has plugged into the realm of purpose. We are lifting up one prayer. Lord, cause me to be aligned to your working in this place. May we not be like Jacob who would say that God was here but I knew him not. Lord, cause me to be aligned. Grant Spirit, touch your church. Stir the heart of men. Revive us once again with your passion. Cause us to come alive unto your working in this place. And let Jesus be seen. Let Jesus be glorified. And let Jesus be magnified. Can you slap your hands and give a mighty shout to him? Clap your hands, all you people. And shout unto God with a voice of prayer. just want to worship the I am that I am we just want to stay in this mood so in this atmosphere just open your mouth and say something to your father just open your mouth and just reverence him in this moment I feel like worship is the only time where we really get to tell God how we feel how we see him worship is the time where we get to just lift God's name on high and just let him know that you are the I am that I am. You are my loving father. I don't worship anybody else but you because you're God. Your existence alone makes you worthy enough of all praise and all worship. And so we worship you, Father, and we give it all to you. Let's fill this room with worship. 
you're not saying words unto me, but you're saying it to that which is the maker of your life. You're saying it to that which sits on the throne and reigns in majesty. You are saying it to the I am that I am, the king of all kings, the God of all days, the God of all times, the one that remains the same, the one that is not conditional with us, the one that loves us despite of our wrongs, despite of our sins, the one that sits on the throne. We worship you, God. We give you all the praise. So there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do and I could search for all eternity long and find that there is none like you oh
Can somebody turn up one time? Praise the Lord. I know y'all are excited to be here this evening. I'm excited to be here this evening. We're about to turn up real quick. So I need y'all to, you know what I'm saying, clap it up, jump, shout, sing, everything, you know what I'm saying, so we can make this thing live. Let's go. Hey. Whoa. The 
success now you be your god every other god not so so yeah yeah Now you be your God. Jesus, now you be your God. Every other Aha. 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 Every other Every other God. So, 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 so. Every other God. Again. And I love it so much. Jesus, now you be your God. Uh huh. I tried that, I tried it. I tried that, I tried it. I tried that, I tried it. 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 Jesus, now you be your God. Uh huh. I tried it. Uh huh. I tried it. Uh huh. I tried it. Jesus, now you be your God. Every other God, not so so yeah, yeah. Every other God, Every other God, not so so yeah, yeah. Every other God, not so so yeah, yeah. Every other God, not so so yeah, yeah. And not to Muzi Naje, Mukan Funen, Mutu to know that.
Praise the Lord. Oh, lift it up, lift it up for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lift it up to the Almighty God, the King of Kings, the risen King, the I am that I am. Hallelujah. Uh, tonight, whoo, the presence of God, so rich. Um, we're next gen from Columbus, Ohio. Um, yeah. We are so honored to be here. Thank you, IQ, for just giving us this platform and letting us worship with you all. Um, we thank God. We just hope that you guys are blessed um, in the presence of God. Um, mm, amen. We just want to speak about the King of Glory. We want to worship the I am that I am, the Prince of Peace. We want to take this time to be in our true purpose. The Lord created us for worship. And I pray that you open up your hearts to worship our maker in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, you're worthy. Take control.
wouldn't be where we are. We wouldn't look like the way we look if it wasn't for Jesus. You couldn't sing the way you could. You couldn't shine like you could if Jesus wasn't in you. You are my King Jesus. Just one, just one. 
will sing hallelujah say hallelujah we will sing hallelujah and i'll dance with my father 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 you new gen god bless you all right so today i'm here to talk to y'all about passion and purpose and i'm still trying to figure it out all right so regardless of whether you get the peace or not regardless of whether you like my fit or not i'm here to tell you one thing that thing that god has put inside of you that you've been putting off for a couple years now it's time to start Everybody else sings. God doesn't make mistakes. Start. You're going to suck the first time. You're probably going to suck the second time. Keep going. Because creation, everyone in this room, is awaiting the manifestations of the sons of God, and that is you. So if you can't start, we won't see it. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. If you don't start, we can't say God is good. 
Amen. A 16-year-old girl, known yet alone, plagued with hormonal acne and an unsatisfied itch to do something. The potential energy to accomplish something great is there, but it needs direction. It is slowly building momentum through the wind tunnels of life and accelerating with time. December 2015 would change my life forever. A spicy chicken sandwich, orange slices soaked in high fructose corn syrup, disguised as juice, and chocolate milk was my lunch that day. I barely ate half. We were planning for Black History Month as usual, and we didn't want to be boring or regular. With an acquaintance, I had unnecessarily promoted to friend. We bounced ideas off the red cafeteria table, yet nothing made sense. They say I'm not the average Black girl because I am so well-spoken, poised, full of etiquette, a white man's token. Though it had been years since I had heard that piece glued to my mom's couch on a Friday night, despite being surrounded by the stadium-like noise, it's as if someone had whispered those lines in my ear just in the nick of time. With eyes lit with fire, excitement, and this is it. We run across the eating hall that seemed to stretch a quarter mile long. Startled. She smiles as we burst into her room, panting, gasping for approval. Her student with ADHD smiles and waves. She listens, she nods, and she says, this school has to hear this message. We divide and conquer according to strengths, and we perform. It was so bad. It was so bad. Eunice from today, me right now, would tell Eunice from back then to go and sit down because in you, this is horrible. February 2016 was the beginning of a domino set that is still falling into pleasant places. So now, let's start the actual piece. It often comes on the other side of obedience. Peace. Nine times out of 10, it's not easy, it's annoying, but you know God is right. A cocktail of identity, assignment, and guidance. Purpose is not so complicated. Nine times out of 10, God won't split open the sky and use clouds to spell out where he wants you to go, Nineveh. At the end of the day, our purpose is to manifest the glory, the beauty, the radiance, the might, the mercy, and the love of God. All done in very unique ways. Though it may tarry, like Joseph's did, wait on him. You may not know where you're going, but like Abraham, go anyways. Like our Savior, Jesus Christ. Many may not understand why you do what you do, but do it anyways. They're going to be mad. Oh well. It is a sign that you're walking in his will. Peace. So as we comb through the knots of singing the right notes, matching similes with hyperboles, and making sure the stage lights are just right, may we find peace. Give a shout on to God. Amen, amen, amen. First of all, we want to thank you all for being here. And we want to thank God for everything that he has done over the past 11 years with Back to Worship. We want to thank each and every one of you for the sharing of the flyers, for a lot of you carpooled to get over here to Cincinnati, for sharing with your friends, for donating. Giving day was a success. Amen. 
I've never seen anything like it, so go on and clap for yourselves, because y'all did that. And for those of you still looking to donate, there's still time, so I'll talk about that later. Today's um, Back to Worship, this year's Back to Worship is in memory of Danny Tofi, who we unfortunately lost this year. But we recount all of the wonderful and great contributions that he made to Back to Worship as an organization and in us in our individual lives. And our sister Lydia is going to talk a little bit about what Danny meant to her before I continue. Yes, so, um, yeah, Danny Tofi. Danny was such a special person. And tonight I just want to say a few words out of many about our brother not to cut into the pain that most of us experience or are still experiencing perhaps, but to say things that will cause an awakening in each of us. Um, I had a moment, like I've had several encounters and moments with Danny and yesterday I just had a flashback when the team came over to our house and um, Sam was making jollof and then I remembered last year how you know the team came over and I love to have them over in my house like I love it so much it, it brings me so much joy and out of my generous heart okay I decided to make jollof rice and you know how when you are by yourself, the jollof just tastes so perfect. And once you get guests in your house, like, well, I tried. Everybody was in expectation. They were waiting. Eunice was sitting. They were like, wow, the jollof is so red. It's going to taste really good. And the jollof ended up disappointing me. So, you know. And the team, they are really honest. You don't want to ask them their honest opinion. Like, especially Sam. Sam came to taste the jollof and was like, Sister Lydia, this one, dear, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not given. And so I was so sad, right? Because I had bought a lot of ingredients, bought a lot of meat and all that. My husband tasted it was like, mm, it's manageable, you know, don't... <laughs> I was like, honey, don't stress. I think the tomatoes was, was too sour or whatnot. And then, so they gave up on the jollof. The jollof gave up, gave up on us. Danny came over and tasted the jollof. And then Danny was like, wow. Like, is this the same jollof you guys are talking about? I'm like, Danny, it's okay. You can't, you can you know. And then he was like, no, the jollof is... This is actually the best jollof I've ever tried. Like, it's so good. And guess what? He, you know, fetched himself a plate, ate everything to let me see that it's that good. And then was like, oh, can I have another plate? And I was like, like, really, Danny? <laughs> you know, and that's, it, it, it gets to show you the kind of heart this guy had right he didn't want me to feel bad he wanted me to feel you know that it's okay and the next day he was like I'm gonna take some back to Colombo so the jollof wasn't wasted and it made me like I was thinking about it yesterday and it just made me so emotional you know after the funeral and all that I was sad for some time but every time I remembered him I was just like wow you know can you imagine how God welcomed Danny in heaven like well done I'm so proud of you my son like you've done well you've you've actually run the race you know and most of us here I know most of us are young 25 20 19 and we sometimes think that we have a lot of life ahead of us right so you're like oh like I'm slowing down a little bit I'm 19 Every time I saw Danny, he was on the go. Danny was always like in our house. He was waking them up every morning. I'm like, Danny, relax. He's like, if I don't wake them up, they will, they will sleep the whole time. And then he will go with Shiloh and Eden and they go pour water on the guys and wake them up. And he was, every time I saw him, he was like that, you know. And it showed me Danny's sense of urgency. You know, he was only 25 years, but the things that he accomplished, the impacts that he made, 
And then when I hear everybody sharing testimonies about Danny, I'm like, wow. You know, I just knew Danny a little bit, but the impact he made in my life was so tremendous. And that comes to tell us, if you're 21, you don't know your death date, right? You don't know it's, it's 25. So if you're 19, somebody could be like 60, but they have like 90 years to, you know, they have 30 more years to go. And you could be 19 and you have only one year to go. But the sad thing about it is we don't know our death dates. If we knew, then maybe it would like quicken us. But Danny led, uh, left us a legacy, right? Something that we can look onto. And those of you who do not know Danny, you probably have heard about him. And he made an impact. Last thing, it looks like I'm preaching, but I listened to a message this week that uh, really touched my life. It was about preface and passion by uh, the late Miles Monroe. And he was talking about five things, five questions that every single person is struggling with, whether you know it or not. That question is what has driven all of us here. That question is the reason why the decisions you've made is causing you or you know or you're being successful and I'll read those five questions who am I it is a question of identity who are you yeah I think we should ponder upon that who am I because because some people don't know about this question they they will kill for a Nike shoe because they are trying to take upon themselves other, identi other people's identity. The second question is, where am I from? That is a question of heritage. Why am I here? It's a question of purpose. You're not here to just go to school, chill, get A's or C's or F's, you know, get married, <laughs> make babies, die, and that's it. It's a question of purpose. What can I do? It's a question of potential. And where am I going? It is a question of destiny. And I hope that each of us will think about those questions, ponder up over them, and let God be proud of us once we get there. Let God be like, hey, Abigail, I'm so proud of you. Come sit at my right hand. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lydia. So, as Sister Lydia said, Danny lived a life of purpose and passion. And so for that reason, this year, Back to Worship is partnering with the DT Foundation. Um, they're planning to do some amazing work to continue what Danny was doing and help inspire the next generation of people who are committed to their purpose and their passion. Amen. A portion of everything we raise tonight will be donated to the DT Foundation. And we are also selling shirts on behalf of the DT Foundation in the back. So make sure you grab one if you didn't get one, you know, before you go. Amen. A couple of other things. Back to worship. Uh, it has a slate of things that we want to get done, things that we want to do, including workshops, educational seminars, networking events, um, networking lunches, a prayer camp next spring, prayerfully. So keep your eyes open for what we have planned. Let us know what you're interested in because Back to Worship is committed to giving back and helping us all discover our passion and purpose. Now next... I'm gonna ask everybody to go ahead and pull out your phone, please. Pull out your phone. There is a QR code that has been um, projecting all evening. Please go ahead and scan that QR code. There's a form that we need you to complete. It won't take more than one and a half, two minutes tops. We're collecting information. We need your feedback. And so please fill out that form, please and thank you. So go ahead and scan it and start filling out that form. And then after you're done, the phones can go back. While you guys are filling that out, I'll finish the last couple of things. Back to Worship is officially a 501c3 nonprofit organization. As some good news, go ahead and clap for that. That means that all donations are tax deductible. You can go ahead and deduct them from your taxes, amen? 
And if you have any tax questions, if you need a receipt, come and see me. I'll make sure that you get issued one. Especially if you donate more than $250 tonight, please make sure you come and see me so that we can issue you a receipt. Lastly, we're also going to give uh, anybody who didn't have the opportunity to give on giving day to go ahead and give. Throughout the, the night, you'll see our Cash App, Venmo, Zelle, um, and what to make your checks out to projecting on the screen. Please note that the two is actually like two as in to go, so T-O, T-O. So back to worship if you're writing a check. Um, so if you are interested in giving, please do so. And lastly, another way that you can give is by buying merch. You may see people rocking our Back to Worship t-shirts. We have three variations. So if you are interested in it, we are also going to be selling our t-shirts in the back. They are limited in quantity. So if you want one, please make sure you come and get it. In addition, like I said previously, we will be selling t-shirts on behalf of the DT Foundation. So you can pick up your merch in the back as well. And our wonderful minister, Niela, also has merchandise that we are selling. And if you didn't know, Niela is not from the U.S., so, so she can't take that luggage back. So please make sure that you come and get the merch so she can take an empty suitcase back. Amen. That is it for me, and I'm going to call up IQ. Thank you for lending me your ears. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, um, if you have checks... I think you saw the, um, the information up there, and you can see uh, Michelle as well. She will certainly assist you. Thank you for your support of Back to Worship. We are so grateful for what God is doing at Back to Worship. Um, yeah, put your hands together. You can go ahead and put your hands together. <clears throat> I also wanted to say something real quick about Giving Day. Thank you. Thank you for your support of Giving Day. And I know some people said, oh, we're going to wait and come to back to worship so we can give in grand style. All right. So if you want to give in grand style, you can go right ahead. The time is now. Somebody said, all right, you can certainly do that. Um, before we sing the song, I just want to say something little. I think my wife basically said everything. I was just sitting there nervous. I'm like, oh, I... I feel like she's about to cry, but she held it together. <laughs> she held it together. You were nervous too, yes. <laughs> but God bless you, baby. I love you. <laughs> wow. That, that, that was like, that was a good vocal warm-up. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, you know... <clears throat> I, I just have my notes here because I didn't know if it was going to be so emotional, you know, talking about DT, Danny Toffee. And, you know, Danny was a, a part of our team for 10 straight years. Today's the only year that he's not a part of us, and it hurts. Um, this is not a rehashing of his um, homegoing ceremony, right? But we want to channel the impact that Danny made in our lives right to really chase down our purpose link it to a passion have the fire underneath you to pursue and make impact i met danny over 12 years ago he was about when i was what 25 he was probably 13 or something like that and since the t first time I met him, I'm like, who's this young man who is so on fire for God, you know, directing a choir and doing all these things. When I launched my album, my first album, Danny was there to open, yeah, with Trumpet of Christ. And since then, he has made significant impact in my life. Last year, I stood here and I said, I believe that Danny was made for me, right? I said it at, when I was giving my vote of thanks. People didn't understand it. But let me explain. Over 10 years of back to worship, there were times where I was discouraged. There were times where I was doubting what God told me to do. Because I was like, did I really hear the voice of God? Because I'm stressed. I'm exhausted. But Danny was always in my ear. Isaac, we cannot take a year off. Nope, 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 we cannot take a year off. 
like, would, would this guy just agree with me for one time? And let's just take a year off. Even the year, the, the, when COVID hit, 2020, we just wanted to, I, want, I, was, I, I felt like, okay, we need to cancel this because we cannot have an audience. And Danny and JB were like, no, you know what? We could certainly do a hybrid or we could certainly do just a, a recording and then stream it later. But what it goes to show is that even along the journey, God has people. And that's why I say Danny was made for me because there was somebody, irrespective of his age, that was going to make a significant impact in my life. So you're not too young to make an impact. You're not too old to make an impact. If you felt like all your years you, you've done nothing. The time is now. Okay, we don't have to go all the way to centuries ago to Jesus' time at the age of 12 years old making an impact. We have somebody, an example this year. Danny made an impact. He's our example right now. And that is the reason for this theme, purpose and passion. Find that purpose that is in Christ Jesus. And if you find Christ, find what he has ordained for you to do and this medley that we're about to do is something that Danny did last year and I love this so much I've been putting on, on replay like numerous times but every time Danny did a medley and I heard it it touched me so much I'm like Danny can I steal this for my next gig he's like go right ahead brother so Danny I'm taking this one all right By the way, today I'm wearing LLDT and it says long live DT. You too, babe. 
So that was great. But can you do it better for Jesus this evening? He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all honor. Before we get into anything, allow me to please do this publicly. Can we give a big round of applause for our man of God, Minister Isaac Quay? Come on, you can do it better. Come on. You know what? I was telling him on um, our way back from the, from the airport, he doesn't even know. For years, I would watch this man on Facebook. And this was in a time when I, I myself was searching for my purpose. So it's amazing how full circle I got to meet this man. And he, he, he called me one evening. He said, Josh, I want you to join us for Back to Worship this year. And you know, you, the, the, the full circle, you don't understand. The fact that this was one of the, there's only a handful of people that I can actually accredit, you know, that they helped me to find my purpose. So minister... I, I, I salute, I honor you, I adore you. You are exceptional, you are special to me. Now if it's not too much to ask, we wanna just remain in the same presence of the Lord. As an act of adoration, just place your hand on your heart. Without any music or anything, just say something unto Jesus. Tell him that you love him, that you adore him. You don't need a song to start to tell him that you love him. Let him know how much that you feel, how you adore him from the depths of your heart. Lift up your voice just in a few seconds. We love you, Jesus. We adore you. We magnify your name, Jesus. say we love
There's none besides you, Lord. None besides you. No other God. We lay our lives before your throne. There's none besides you, Lord. No other God but you. We lay our lives before your yes, we love you, Jesus. Yes, we do. We love you, Lord. We adore you. We adore you, Lord. We lay, we lay our lives before your Oh, yes, we love you, Jesus. Yes, we do. We adore you. We adore you, Lord. We lay our lives before your throne. There is none besides you, Lord. No, no, no. No other God. We lay, we lay before your throne. There is none besides. Oh, yeah. 
surrender my life onto you just lift up your voice and tell him as long as I live I will surrender my life onto you I will surrender my life onto you I remember in a time when I was searching for purpose a song dropped into my spirit by the grace of God we were able to record the song us to learn it together. Can we learn the song together tonight? The song says, We have nowhere else to go. Let your oil on flow. So we may go on and let it be known there's no God like our sovereign sovereign God we have nowhere else to go let your oil overflow so we may go on and let it be known purpose there's no God like our Sovereign Church, can we try to say We have, we have nowhere Nowhere else to go Let your oil overflow So we may go on Sing it out, say So we Say, there's no God like you. Lift up your voice tonight. In this atmosphere of worship, just let the Lord know that there is no God like you. We honor you, Lord, yes. Who is like you, Lord? Sovereign God, here we are in your presence. We will dwell. <laughs> Sovereign God, here we are. Your story is ours to tell. For we have nowhere else to go. Let your oil overflow So we may go on And let it be known There's no God like our sovereign God 
said we have nowhere else to go let your royal love flow so we may go on and let it be known there's no god like our sovereign god Say sovereign God, say sovereign God. Come on, you can do a little snap to it. In your breast, we will dwell. Say sovereign God, say sovereign God. Here we are. Here we are. Your story, your story. Said we have nowhere, we have nowhere. like this like this I'm tired, yeah, tired, yeah. come on come on the song goes like this it says it says this say hallelujah hey, you have won the victory come on hallelujah you have won the victory can I hear you guys come on sing it out say come on you can do better come on Hallelujah, hallelujah, come on, let's go, say it, hallelujah, yeah, hallelujah, 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 I say Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. You are seated in majesty, singing praises to you, our King. Hallelujah! 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 I said, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah. 
lift your hands, somebody. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You are seated on the throne of Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. All power belongs to Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Hear the cry of your people, Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. All power belongs to Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Cause you're a cloud by day, you are fire by night. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, cause you're a cloud by day, you are fire by night. atmosphere if only you can believe don't wait for that popular person to come whenever two or three are gathered he's here with us I don't know what you need you need but I'm gonna give you five seconds matter of fact 30 seconds and access the power of Yahweh I am that I am I am a healer 
Hey, that Manasha. <laughs> I am a cancer destroyer. <laughs> I am a suicidal killer. Any plans of the enemy? Time zero tonight. Come on, lift up your voice. Any plans of the enemy? Time zero tonight. <laughs> Any plans of the enemy? Time zero tonight. Any plans of the enemy shall fail tonight. Any plans of the enemy shall fail tonight. Ten thousand must fall on my head. The Spirit of God is here. And wherever His Spirit is, there's liberty. So if you want to be set free, if you want to be saved, we have a plan, right? But guess what? Let's put aside the plan. Your soul is what matters tonight. Forget the songs, forget the set list. What matters tonight, what is paramount for me tonight is that your soul is saved. So wherever you are, if you want to kneel, if you're not saved, I want you to give your life to Christ. If you've lost your way, I want you back. Back to worship. It's back to our first love. So lift up your hands to heaven and say, Father, here I am. I have pushed this back for way too long. With a broken and contrite heart, oh God, I come to you just as I am. It's not enough to sing and dance, oh God. It's not enough to go through the motions because I don't know when you're going to call me home. And so, Holy Father, I give my life to you. Come on. Say, I give my life to you. I give my mind to you. I give my heart to you. And I give you my body as a living sacrifice I dedicate my life to you use me for your glory say thank you Jesus for that saving grace and for those who've lost their way I pray that God will bring you back to your first love come on lift up your hands to heaven I believe that God is doing something He's moving. There's a revival in the land. And I want you to position yourself to be used by God. So stay. I know what it's like. presence of a Lord and not know what time it is because time 
stood still Bodies were healed Families restored Because we stayed here presence of the Lord. No one had to say a word. Couldn't even make a sound. But I give up everything for this treasure I found. I never wanted to end So I say stay I don't want you to go Cause my heart is burning I want more I want more I want more Jesus I want more Come on if you know how to sing it I want more I of your power, oh God. I want more. Sing, Jesus, I want more. Jesus, I want more. Said, I
your presence, Lord. So I say, stay. This is a song I did over 10 years ago, My Secret Place. That secret place is safe in the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to invite my brother, David, up here. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we all soaking it in? Man. It's been amazing so far. Can I have a witness? It has been absolutely amazing. Hallelujah. Where's my wife? Wifey, can you please come? Come on. I want my wife to pray for me before I start. The Spirit of God is here, and I can feel Him moving. Let us pray. Gracious Father, everlasting King, King of kings, Lord of lords, 
Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah Rapha. May your name be praised, may your name be adored for such a time as this. We thank you, Lord, that you are guiding us to find our true purpose in life. We thank you for such an amazing program. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for his background. I thank you for the kind of man that he has become. I thank you, Lord, that you placed him on this earth just for me. Lord, I pray that yourself will speak through him. Let him be a vessel. Empty him. Whatever it is that's going to flow out of his mouth, it's not going to be flesh, but it's going to be directly from you. Father Lord, we stand upon your word. Father Lord, we know that you are here. We know that you have something special planned for us. Therefore, please use my husband as a vessel, a point of contact, that everyone who is here will hear your voice. And that by the time we leave here, we'll have a direction a direction that will lead us to our true purpose. May your name be praised. May your name be adored. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Wow. I might as well just put the mic down and leave right now, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, uh, again, for my wife, everyone. An amazing woman of God. People don't know, but man. We were all alone and could do anything that we wanted. And then we had an intrusion. <laughs> an intrusion, an intrusion whom we love so much. <laughs> an intrusion nonetheless. His name is Zachary. And before he came, we could do anything we wanted, right? He just had to plan it and just leave and then go do what you wanted to do but somehow Zachary came around and man that guy isn't even two but he looks four and he's as strong as someone who's 26 I'm not even kidding <laughs> and that guy has earned himself the title little terrorist for Christ, for Christ, all right? <laughs> that kid is going to terrorize the camp of the enemy without a doubt. I know it. Can someone shout amen? amen? But he's using us for practice. He is terrorizing the living daylights out of us. <laughs> you know, I can almost imagine when he was up with God and he was like God please 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 let me use them for practice <laughs> and so my wife got pregnant <laughs> and since he's been here you know one one of the things we can't do anymore is just up and leave right everything has to be planned so meticulously so what do we do? We plan, and then we stay home. <laughs> and one of the things that we do when we're staying home is watch Netflix and chill. Oh, come on, Marilla. You know it. But not for long, though, because Zachary comes running at like 30 miles per hour. <laughs> and my, mom, my, mom, my wife is like, please don't, 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 don't. Somebody told me that Baby Blues was for only... Two weeks. My wife did not get that memo. <laughs> um, he got COVID and she said, nobody's going to touch him till he's 15 years old. And I know she means it. But one of these days we were watching a show. It was called Keep Breathing. And in there, there was a lawyer, very good lawyer, who 
was involved in a plane crash along with some other people. She was the only person who survived. She was able to swim to shore. And then she was stuck on this place, this, let's call it an island, okay? So here it is, a lawyer who is extremely gifted. And she was stuck at a place where she could not use her gift. I want to call that place the place of survival. All that she could think of was just to survive over there. She bore nothing in her mind about the giftings that she had, the kind of person that she was. All she wanted to do was what? Survive. It consumed her day and night trying to find something to eat testing out berries looking at bears to see which one they will eat so that she'll know it's not poisonous the place of survival a lot of us have that place of survival where all we can think of is surviving So much so that we can't even take a minute to live. For some, it looks like going to job day and night just to get money to buy some food and hope to God that there is enough to pay your bills. For some, it is working two jobs because, man, those school loans are really killer. For some, it is trying your best to have two seconds of happiness and being stuck so much under different forms of addiction. For some, it is depression, deep hurt, suicidal thoughts, trying your best just to keep above water in this place of survival and the enemy has you so strung down that you can't even think about the things God has put in you you can't even think about who you are in Christ you're so consumed all you want to do is just survive in the place of survival Are you not tired being in the place of survival? Where you can think about everything else but the reason you were brought on this earth. You are so busy going through life, going through the motions of life such that this world is leading you and not the Holy Spirit. Aren't you tired of being in this place where you don't even stand for a second to think, why am I here? Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired in this place of survival? And the truth of the matter is that if we don't come to a realization that this is a trick of the enemy to keep us away from the prize, to keep us away from what God intends for us on this earth, nothing will ever change. We need to make a move. We need to take action. Somewhere last week, I went for a conference. And in that conference, a lot was said. It was honestly one of the best spiritual experiences I've ever had. I'll come back to that shortly. But I want to talk about something that this woman who was stuck in the place of survival did. She knew no one was coming. And so she started to make a move. She was able to make a compass that showed her the north and she started to walk towards the north she was limping but she was going 
Biblically, the north signifies where the seat of God is. You know, the enemy said that I will ascend into the heavens, right? And he talked about the seat of God being in the what? In the far north. And what I learned from this movie is that this woman was walking in her place of survival. The first thing that she thought to do was to walk towards the north. Walk towards where the seat of God is. She was limping. And a lot of us are limping. A lot of us are bearing deep hurts. A lot of us are, are dealing with things that just weigh us down. But I'm here to tell you this morning that heard, uh, head for the north. Head for the north. Come closer to God. Move towards God. Day in and day out. Build your relationship with God. And that walk to the north is the walk I like to call the walk of purpose. Because there is no purpose without God. We're talking about it this morning that if God is the one who created you, then he surely knows why you're here. And nothing short of a relationship with him will help you fulfill your purpose. I want us to read something from, if I can find it. I know I can find it. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. All right, I found it. Psalm 76 verse 6. It says, For promotion comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. And then it ends there. Which place was it mentioned? The what? So where does promotion come from? Come on. I want to hear it. Where does promotion come from, guys? Come on, I want to hear it. Where does promotion come from? It comes from God. Who is seated on his throne. Far above. In the farthest place of the north. And so let us build our relationship with him. Let us journey to the north. That waiting period, so to speak, while you're trying to get to know him isn't a time of inaction. We talked about it this morning that the purpose is a journey. Okay? It's a journey that you need to walk each and every day. Everything that happens in your life, God is using for your purpose. And we talked about how Jesus had to be what? Had to be a carpenter for how many years? 30 years before he started ministry that made him die on the cross for us. And so at every stage in your life, you need to ask God, what do you want me to do in this season? What are you using this season to teach me? What is it, oh Lord? Which part of my purpose am I in right now? And there is always something to do. There is always someone to impact. Always. You just got to ask God. And you might think, I might not be good enough. And you might be right. <laughs> but that's exactly where God wants you to be. <laughs> that is exactly what God wants you to be because he takes the base things of this world to magnify himself. And I was talking about this conference that I went to last week. And somebody just walks up to me and just starts, man, it was, it was crazy. Just starts prophesying, right? He said a lot of things. Man, the guy talked for like 20 minutes. I was just standing there in tears. And one of the things that he said that really stuck out to me, he said, he said, God has you in a wilderness. And God will stretch you. He says, God will stretch you. He says, I know that might not be a good word to tell someone right now, but God will stretch you. <laughs> and then I smiled. 
Because I was like, man, more stretching. <laughs> In the last year, I lost a very good friend. Two months. In Ghana, two months before my dad passed. And then while I was still dealing with that, and most of you who know my sister knows how much a toll that took on her. And we're all dealing with that. And then, babe, forgive me, but I'm about to say this. And then while we're still dealing with that, we had a baby who never dropped on this earth. And right around the time we're dealing with that, we lose Danny. <laughs> More stretching than this, God. <laughs> but he said one thing that was important. He said, enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey because God is working on you. See, guys, we're going through so much pain because of Danny's death. After Danny died, I used to pray in my basement and I couldn't go there anymore. I, I couldn't. I couldn't go there to pray. Why? Anytime I go there, I see him right there on the keyboard helping me with songs. More stretching than this. We feel stretched. We feel stretched. But God says he's working something in you because of this. God says he's working something in you because of this. And the enemy will regret that he ever did what he's doing in your life. I don't know where you are right now in your life. You might be going through so much. You might be crying yourself to sleep. But I say trust the process because God is working something in you. The enemy, the enemy will regret the day that he brought that into your life. The enemy will regret. Ah, can someone hear me? I said the enemy will regret. He thought he was putting Jesus through persecution. He thought he was trying to kill Jesus and terminate his purpose. Ah, but little did he know. Little did he know. The Bible says if they knew, only if they knew, they would not have crucified the king of glory. God is working something through the pain in that place of survival where you feel that all hope is lost, where you feel that you can't go on anymore. I want you to stand up on your feet and say that God is working something in me. God is working something in me. And do not give up because he is working something in you. Uh, he is peeling layer by layer. He is pruning you. He is sanctifying you. And he owes. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Because at the end, the enemy is going to regret. <laughs> he is going to regret that he ever touched you. He didn't get the memo. Touch not my anointed. I said he did not get the memo. Touch not my anointed. I said he did not get the memo. Touch not my anointed. Oh, can someone scream? I am anointed. Ah. I'll bring my sermon to an end. I see he's looking at his watch already. But I want to tell someone that you're in that place of survival. And your mind is not even on what God really can do through you. 
But I want, to, I want you to take where you are in your strides, knowing that God is working on you. And you know what you need to do? You need to journey to the north. You need to journey to the north. Build up. Build up yourself. Build up yourself. Build up yourself. Because God is about to do something through you. Do not lose focus. The Bible says we need to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so we know what happened when Peter, when he was walking on water, took away his eyes from Jesus. What happened? He started sinking. He was stuck in his place of survival. Why? He was thinking about the storms around him. But we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Turn to the north and start walking that journey of purpose. Start walking to the north. Start getting closer to God. Set a time and pray. Stick to that time. Let it be your appointment with God. Study the word and be transformed into the image of his son. And purpose will come. Purpose will come. so I say at the end of the day as you're journeying when you come to a river which is actually what the girl came to while she was going to the north she went into the river and what was she doing she was holding onto her pl a plank trying her best to stay afloat the river signifies the Spirit of God. Stop struggling with the Spirit. Stop struggling with the Spirit. And she finally just, what it looked like, she gave up. And she went under. That is the best place to be. Because you say, Lord, Holy Spirit, I want you to take total control. I want to go deep, deep into the river. And this whole time, actually, she was pregnant. She was able to come to shore, was saved, and she birthed her baby. Somebody is about to birth their purpose. Somebody is about to birth their purpose. In the place of survival, you're about to escape miraculously out of the place of survival you are about to let the Holy Spirit in and he is going to take total control for you to birth your purpose God bless you come on put your hands together for David wow 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 God bless you and if you want to do me a favor and let's all stand as we welcome Niela all the way from England I don't want to say much about her she's a superstar if you already know but her humility her humility and her humor I love it I love it I love it so over to you Niela God bless you praise God praise the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding sight draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died draw Blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding sight, 
It's very interesting that today's topic is passion and purpose. To be honest, I didn't actually know until today. I've just been posting the flyer on my Instagram. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but when I was 19, I remember that I used to have heart palpitations and I used to get really, really scared. And sometimes I'd be there and I'd just kind of like, you know, that kind of feeling. And what was my issue? My issue was I didn't know what my purpose was. And I remember one time I was, in, I was at college. Was I at college at 19? No, I'd been kicked, I'd, I'd left and I got shipped to Ghana. Anyway, so, um, I think it was like when I was in college, so I was probably like 17 at the time. And, you know, I said to my friends, I was like, do you guys sometimes panic? Like, why are we here? And they were like, no, no, we don't. And I was like, okay, what's wrong with me then? Um, and all I can say is that I just kept asking the question, why am I here? I remember one time I looked at my parents and I was so angry. I was like, why did you guys bring me here? Look at, look at, look at him. So angry, you know, because I just didn't understand. Being a PK, we, sometimes we, we had service every single day, a service of a sort. It was ushers meeting, elders meeting, pastors, whatever, choir training, every single, it was literally every single day. And then I, I went to school, I see my friends, they don't go to church, and they, they seem like they're doing all right. If anything, they look like they're having more fun than I am, you know? And so I just started to ask all these questions. And all I can say is that if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here right now. I probably would have lost my mind. I don't know how the Americans, I would have lost my mind. But yeah, literally, I would have lost my mind. Um, because I was so depressed so suicidal it's my humor that kept me alive because i remember i was in ghana and that night i was literally like you know what it's so if there's anyone here who's ever dealt with depression or you're currently dealing with depression every day when you wake up is like oh man back back here again you know it's almost like it's painful to breathe every single day and i remember one day i was just like i just don't want to do this anymore i was like god i'm tired you know, I've gone looking for love in the wrong places. I've had my heart shattered. Um, <laughs> behave, behave. And I, I've, I've always said that, like, I, I need to tell my story in some way, shape, or form. Maybe, I don't know, a movie, a series, a, a monologue, a something, you know? Because, you know, my first boyfriend, he got deported. The second one went to prison. I mean, I guess. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> the third one turned into, he, he was a church boy, he turned into a mini shatawale, you know, and it's just, you know, that was me just giving my all every single time and just kind of having it thrown in my face every time, over and over and over and over again, and until I surrendered to God for real, for real, like, yo, 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 clearly, clearly I don't know what I'm doing, you know, clearly, clearly I don't know what I'm doing, and I remember that night as I was, as, as I was crying, I was on the floor, I was, I was crying, and I just said to God, at some point I was even like, I don't even know if God is real, like this whole thing that we've been doing, what's, like, what is this, you know? Other people are out there, they're fine, so what's this whole God thing about? And um, I remember that night, I lay on the floor, and the only reason why I didn't kill myself was because I, I was like, I don't have the courage to slit my wrist. Um, we don't have a gun in the house, that would be really quick. Um, and then I was like, but we're one floor up. You know, like if I jump, they'll find me in the morning. My leg is like this. You know, I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna die, you know? So this is crazy, because I'm actually, at this point, I'm cry like crying. You know the crying where you can't, <laughs> like that kind of crying, but this is happening in my head at the same time. Because I'm like, I, c I can't kill myself. So I'm like, okay, fine, why don't, why don't I pray? So I'm like, Apparently, in the Bible, it says that God has eyes because we are created in his image. And I was like, God, if you have eyes, I need you to see me. And if you have hands, I need you to touch me because I literally cannot do this anymore. And I remember I just crawled back to the bed and lay down and forgot about it. And so many things happened after that. I ended up in a reality TV competition like Ghana X Factor. Um, 
no, no who I, stri- I suffered over there. Anyway, so then, um, but funny enough, that was one of the things that God used to jumpstart my singing because I never wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be everything apart from a singer, you know? And so I end up doing the show, and for the first time, I'm like, I'm not bored. I used to, like, I'll draw for a while, then I'm like, I'm bored. Then I'll be like, I'm going to be a dancer. I'll be in the house thing. Then I'm like, oh, I don't do this no more, I'm bored. And then I would start designing clothes, I'm bored. I bought a sewing machine, I was bored. I, everything that I did, I was just so bored. I would get so bored. And then I did this competition, and all of a sudden I was like, I'm not bored. I'm not bored of singing. And it's crazy, because right now, all the other things that I would get bored of, they all work into the whole music thing. Sometimes I have to design outfits, sometimes I have to write something, sometimes I have to, you know, do a routine or work. Like, it, it all works together now. And so, one year later after the show, that God used to build my confidence and all sorts of things. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a Christian show. You know, I'm not encouraging anyone to go to The Voice USA. I'm just saying, this is, you know, this is just what happened for me. And so, I was standing in this one church, and after the competition, um, there was this one pastor who, he just liked me for no, I don't know why. I don't know, maybe it's the size of my forehead now. But he just really liked me. So after the competition, he was like, come to my church and come sing. So I was standing in the crowd. And as I was standing there, I just realized, I was like, wait a minute. I'm not depressed anymore. It's like I had a, a literally like a flashback of myself growing up, myself at high school, myself college, you know, relationship, you know, the deported one, the prison one, the shatter one, the, you know, it was like, and all of a sudden it was like, poof, and I was standing in the church. And it's like that pain and that dark cloud that was like always constantly on me was gone. And even the way, even the way like I thought in my head, I realized it just wasn't the same anymore. I have a diary from when I'm 16. When I read that diary, I'm like, who the heck wrote that? It's like somebody else completely. And it's in that moment that I felt like God was kind of smirking and was like, I heard you. And from that moment, I still wasn't entirely sure what I was doing, but I was like, I'm gonna sing for God. I want that if there's some young girl, some young guy out there who is feeling depressed and is broken, and is dealing with rejection and is dealing with I don't know what my purpose is why am I here who am I supposed to be all of these different things I want them to hear the sound of my voice and hear Jesus and so besides purpose the other thing that it says is passion and if you've never had an encounter with God ask him for one because if you don't have a story of your own what, do you, what, what are we talking to people about? We're, we're, we're basically telling people about a Jesus who's like somewhere, you know, oh, you're in the Bible, this is what happened, etc., etc. But when God has actually done things for you yourself and you're looking someone dead in their eye and you're saying, this Jesus saved me, try and tell me no. I'll fight. You know, try and tell me that he didn't. When the disciples went and they said, we saw it for ourselves, we were there. What do you do? But when someone is saying, oh, my mother, my grandma, once upon a time, she is like, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't really have to believe you. And so out of that experience and all the experiences I've had with God, that's where the passion comes from. You know, and God has such an interesting sense of humor because there were so many full circle moments where I met some of my friends from college some of my friends from high school and stuff. And now they would talk about, by the, by the way, when I was in college, I was part of a gang. And I'm like, what? You used to come to college every day, you know, I, I had no idea. And the other one was like, yeah, like, this one is like, oh, I'm dealing with depression. This one's like, oh, I used to deal with one girl. She used to have these wild nosebleeds. Everybody is going through something. But when we come, we, prevent, we present our best faces to each other. And God says, I want your good. I want your ugly. I want everything. And so in this moment, we're just going to sing a little bit. But another part of the purpose part is like, I'm not actually a singer, guys. I'm actually a speaker, you know. But for the longest time, I've been hiding behind singing because it's like, I don't want to talk. I just sing a song and everyone's woo. (laughs) And I'll go. (laughs) But recently, God has been like, Niela, go and open your mouth and go and speak. And I'm just like, fine, cool. 
So in this moment, we're just, if you want to lift up your hands, we're just going to say, Heavenly Father, we come to you with everything that we are. We come to you with our mind, with our heart, with our thoughts, with our desires, with our appetites, with our wills. And we say, Father God, have your way. We lay it down at the foot of the cross. We lay it down, Father God, in front of your throne and we say, take control of everything that we are. For any young man or woman who is in this room who has never had an encounter with you, Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that as they go home, have an encounter with them. Meet them at their workplaces. Meet them in their car. Meet them in their job. Meet them in that relationship. Father God, it says in your word that a broken and a contrite heart you will not reject. Every heart that is in this room that is resistant to the name of Jesus, right now I speak to every heart and I say right now, respect to the name of Jesus every single heart that is broken every single heart that is dead oh God perform surgery on our hearts so we are able to respond to you and feel you and feel your presence and your love Father God I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone who is dealing with depression who is dealing with broken brokenness Father wrap them in your love wrap them in your presence let them know that you created them in your image and your likeness and even before the foundations of the earth you knew them by name you knew how many hairs would be upon their head you knew the color of their skin you knew the shape of their nose father god you are a god that knows everything you see everything everyone who is being lied to right now that they're not good enough that they are just not good enough to accomplish anything in the name of jesus let every voice be silenced let every evil voice be silenced let every lying voice be silenced as we draw near to you as we come closer into your presence and as we lift up our hands Father God let your blood let it wash over us from the soles of our feet the hairs upon our head Father God work in us in the name of Jesus you deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. And we bless your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great.
No matter what comes our way, that's where we sing, oh, that's our prayer tonight, oh, where you are, just cut the music for a second, say, oh, You'll find me right here in my father's house. Hey. You'll find me right here worshiping the Lord. Where you are, where you are. Sing it to your father, say, oh. You have to really mean the words that you're singing. Where you are, where you are, Lord. One more time, real big, say, oh. Hey, yeah, where you are. Jesus, where you are. Are crying, holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Where you are, you're worthy of it all. You
you have something to say to your father, this is the time. You want to speak to him. Let him know that he's worthy. Let him know that you need him. Let him know that you crave him. Let him know that you desire him. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. You deserve the praise. You deserve the praise. Worthy, 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 worthy.
Even in the difficult times, still I will sing that you're good. It's running and chasing after me, after me, after me, after me. Oh, see your goodness is. It's running in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the night time. Yeah.
goodness is running. Your goodness. Come on, put your hands together for Niela. Hey. So all around the room, I want us to just close our eyes. And if you're someone who is dealing daily with depression and with suicidal thoughts, I want you to picture Jesus in your mind right now and look unto him. And because of this testimony, I pray in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, move around in this room. Holy Spirit, move around in this room. I pray in the name of Jesus and I speak to any depression. I speak to any suicidal thoughts because the word, the word of God says that at the end of the day, everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ will completely be brought down. I pray and come against any strongholds of the mind right now. I pray in the name of Jesus. Satan you do not have control over these minds. You do not have control over these bodies. I pray in the name of Jesus and I declare that anyone who is going through depression, anyone who is going through suicidal thoughts because of the work that Jesus did, you are free from today onwards. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, celebrate your freedom in Jesus Christ. Thank you Jesus. Awesome. So, all too soon, we're at the end of Back to Worship 2022, Purpose and Passion. I think this is the best one yet, right? Check, check these people out. How do they look? Yes, yes, they've been awesome. They've been awesome. I just want to thank God for such an awesome and amazing experience. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your giving. If you, are, you haven't given yet, see Michelle. We have, we have to do it. Next year, spring, we have a prayer camp. We're actually going to a campground. And then we are going to spend about three days and just pray, seek the Lord, worship. We're going to go back and like get outside of the noise and just hide away. So if you're interested, again, visit that link, and then let's prepare to go there. God richly bless you. I hope I haven't forgotten anybody, but if I have, I really haven't forgotten you. I love you. I appreciate you. 
Thank you for coming to back to worship 2022. Purpose and passion. I pray you leave with a purpose and passion. Um, last thing, and I think David prayed already. So let's watch this clip that was provided from uh, by someone who put together a collage of our brother Danny in memory of Danny Toffee. So if you want to play that. Thank you, TK.
Shankar